Hello everybody, it's your old pal Michael. Welcome back to Michael Loudon TV. If this is your first time tuning in, thank you for checking out this video and checking out my channel. You can subscribe to my channel for more content up in the corner. Uh, we'll post a link to that at the end of the video. Anyways, on to the video now. This is a running recap video. This is like the first time I've actually done one in about a month um, since I haven't ran in a race since then. Not because of the fact I've been injured or stuff like that. Boy, I've got sweat in my hair, but that's okay. <laughs> Making my hair like kind of stand up a little bit. But because of the fact there hasn't been like any races um, going on in the area. So um, I've just been training um, pretty hard. Uh, there's been some, time, some weeks where I've been able to run all the runs that I needed to. There's been other weeks where I've been busy where I've had to miss out on a couple of runs. And I always hate missing runs. So uh, I, I get a little frustrated with that. But anyways, signed up for the... Uh, Peacock Strut, 31st annual Peacock Strut, running today down in Portage. Um, they have a 5K and a 10K race. And because of uh, the, the two races are uh, split up time-wise, um, you can actually run the 10K and then participate in the 5K if, um, if you can run it fast enough. So I ended up taking that opportunity to do that. Plus, actually, when you when you go to sign up for this, it's like thirty dollars for the race. If you actually sign up um, for both of them, it's like it's thirty dollars for both or thirty dollars for one race. So you're basically paying fifteen dollars for each race, which is a pretty good deal because uh, there's not a lot of races that are going to be a lot cheaper than that. And this is always a very well organized race. They have uh, parking lots filled up for you um, or parking lots uh, designated for you to park at. Um, of course, the getting all of your materials um, for the race, like your bib and your shirt, they have that all well organized. Um, and like the grain elevator down at Celery Flats. And then afterwards, you actually start on one of the side streets on Kingston. Um, so you have to walk uh, quite a distance to actually get to the half, to, to the half, what am I talking about? It might be a half mile back there, but I doubt it is, to the 10K start. And then the 5K starts a little closer. So the 10K went off at 8 a.m., and I'm number 2699, by the way. <clears throat> I haven't put my times on there yet, but that, that's okay. So anyways, um, we, we got started. We, we went off fine. I was, for this race, just going to try to run around about a 7-minute average per mile because I wanted to really um, save some for the 5K. Um, just, just because 10K, I mean... I haven't really been training hard for a 10K run, so I didn't feel like if, you know, I could go out and run a 10K um, at basically just a little slower than my 5K pace. So I felt like, well, let's just run it kind of like a tempo run. Um, so we, so I went out and did that. Um, stuck with uh, one, one guy in front of me for about the first three miles. I ended up getting about a 7.03 first mile, which, I mean, which was pretty good, um, right where I wanted to be at. We headed down Kingston, and then we turned right out onto Garden Lane. We took Garden Lane out to, um, I can't remember the name of the street, um, but anyways, we ended up like turning left on Romance Parkway, and that led us to the trail part. Um, so we'd already hit a mile by that point, and then by the time we got on the trail, we got to the two-mile mark, ran under what, the, the bridge, which, which is always cool running under that because... Um, I mean, it's just something you don't experience a lot of. And then they take you back out on the trail. Uh, you actually run on a over a bridge, I think, that goes over Millam. And that's where I kind of started to slow down a little bit. I had like a 7.10 and 7.13 second and third mile. And I was still with, with this guy that I was keeping up with. Um, but by the time we got to that bridge and he hit the downhill, he just kind of took off and I lost... Um, whatever I was trying to, my pace, I was trying to keep up with him. My fourth mile wasn't terrible. I was like 7.15. So, I mean, I was still holding it together pretty well. <clears throat> but then the last two miles, I ended up kind of like going up. My time went up a lot. Like I had like a 7.28 and like a 7.48, like last two miles, which weren't the greatest times. But, I mean, my legs actually the last two miles – um, really started to feel it really started to feel heavy probably because I haven't really ran hard for a distance like this actually this is my first 10k 
that I've done this year. Cause usually at this time I would have done a couple of 10 Ks, but because I did the half marathon, um, earlier in the year, um, I didn't do the Borges 10 K and then there hasn't, and I didn't do the, um, one over in Battle Creek that I did last year. Actually, it's over Marshall. Um, the Oaklawn Hospitality Classic um, offers the same chance, and I didn't get I didn't do that either because it was just another race closer in the area. I ended up doing that day. So yeah, this is my first ten k this year. Um, still, I felt like I did pretty well. I ended up with like a seven nineteen average pace. Um, ended up at like forty five twenty. I was thinking to myself I'll probably come in between like forty three and forty five minutes. Um, so, I mean, I was a little over that, but I mean, not too bad. Still ended up, let's get the award here to show you. They give out very nice awards too. They give out plaques. Um, so I got second place in my age group. The guy who ended up, whoops, didn't mean to throw it. <laughs> uh, the guy who ended up getting second overall, I believe, ended up being in my age group. So, I mean, I didn't really stand a chance to catch him, unfortunately. Um, so there, I had about a half an hour to rest up for the 5k and I started to get a little cramp too right on my side um, during that 10k run so I was hoping that would go away and um, I wouldn't have that because usually actually during these races I've never really experienced like cramping or any kind of issues um, I mean my legs felt heavy but I mean they tend to after you've been doing a, a long run that you're not really used to running hard for so I was second in my age group like I said and I was 12th overall I had two runners pass me um, once we got going, obviously, um, in the last three miles. So, I mean, I held it together pretty well. And then the 5K started <clears throat> at 9.15, and I was hoping to finally break 21 again because the last race I did, if you checked out if you check out that video, the Allegan Strides for Health, it was a really hot and humid morning for that run. And I never do well for hot and humid races. And I ended up getting like 21, around 21.30. It wasn't a good race. So this morning it's like cool out. It's like around 50. There's a little breeze. Um, it's sunny. I was thinking, yeah, we, we can do this again. We can get break 21. But I mean, it, maybe because I did the 10K, um, I was thinking maybe that might not happen because my legs would feel a little heavier. Because before when I've done this, I've ran a 5K comparable to a time that I usually run a 5k in without even doing a 10k and then a couple of times I've done it and um or there's been another time I've done it I should say because I've only this is like the third time I've done this so the other time I did it my legs felt really really heavy during the whole 5k run so I mean we could get both experiences but we started out and I didn't actually start out as fast as I wanted to there was a few people in front of me prevented me from getting out to my quick speed burst and then easing into my pace. So I tried to get off to the side and do that once we uh, got out onto the side street on Kingston again a little bit. But um, I actually didn't get going at a pace I thought because I wanted to run, if I was going to break 21, I really wanted to try to get like a 6.30 first mile. And I didn't look at my mile splits because sometimes when I look at those, I don't end up um, running uh, or I or I do it. Well, no, sorry. I end up running, obviously, but I end up slowing down because I psych myself out about going too fast. Or, so I didn't look at my first mile split, but I felt like I was going pretty well because um, I mean my legs weren't feeling heavy, so that was gone. Thank goodness. By the time we got to like the first mile mark, um, like I started to get a cramp a little bit in my left shoulder, and the one on my left side was returning. But it didn't hinder me enough to slow me down. Now, my friend Chris was coming up on me just as we were hitting the trail. And I stuck with him for quite a, quite a long time. Um, ended up sticking with him, going through the trail. Um, and I figured if I stick with him, I'm going to break 21 because he's been notorious for doing that. So I'll be like, well, I'll stick with him. I'm probably going to break 21. We were, we were pushing each other. I was right on his shoulder, going hard, making our way, weaving our way through the trail. Basically, it's not the same route as the 10K, obviously. Um, they had you head left on the trail instead of right, and then you did like a big paperclip loop, coming back the same way you finished the 10K. Go, of course, you go under the bridge twice. 
And by the time we actually got back to just the part where we're going toward the end with about, I'd say, a half mile to go, he kicked it in. Um, I, I just was trying to hold on because the cramp at that time was really, really starting to bother me. So I was just holding on best I could. Um, I ended up finishing, I think in the top 10, I'll have to look at the results and I'll post a link to the results in the description below, by the way, too. Um, cause I, at the time after the race, I was getting a massage. So my wife, Kathleen ended up going <clears throat> and getting the award for me. So I figured I got 2131 was my overall time. So I didn't break 21 like I wanted to. And I think it probably had to do with the 10 K. I mean, it felt like I was going faster than what I thought I ran, but I guess, I guess it felt a little easy. I, I guess it did feel a little easy to me, but not too easy. My mile times ended up being 651, which was, you know, slower than what I wanted, but not too bad. And then I had like a 7, like 13 for my second. And then my last one was actually a 647. So as you can see, we were definitely pushing each other at that point. So of course, in the finish, you have to run up a little slight incline, which is okay. I mean, not that big of a deal. So I finished, grabbed some Gatorade, grabbed some water, uh, got, got a nice little massage. Um, it, it, I mean, it, it went well. I'm going to, I mean, I and and I'm getting an award. I got second place in my age group. So uh, overall, I mean, not bad. I mean, for, for, for the two races. I mean, did I want to do a little bit better in the 5K? Yeah, I wanted to be back under 21, but probably running the 10K beforehand maybe got to me this time. Maybe took a little bit out of me that I thought I had that I, I didn't. So won't be doing a race next week. But I'll be doing a race in two weeks, which is the last race of the Camelot Runner Series. That's the run for the sun. So, and that's a pretty flat course all the way around. So hopefully I can break 21 that race um, again because I'd really love to get back under 21 because that's what I've been doing all season. So let's hope that happens. So you can subscribe to my channel for more content. I'll post a link to my Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter. I'll post a link to that in the description along with the results, like I said, down below. So thank you for tuning in to Michael Loudon TV for the Peacock Strut 5K, 10K running recap over and out.